call the meeting to order. This is our monthly meeting, Thursday, October 27, 2022. We have a call present. We we'll call the meeting to order. Our first item, uh, the gentleman is not here yet, so we'll go to that when he shows up. Is there any public input? I see none. We'll go to minutes. The uh, policy committee minutes. Move they be approved. I'll second that. Questions, comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is passed. The uh, board meeting minutes at 922. Move they be approved. Second. It is seconded. Questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Again, unanimous. Okay. Uh, Executive Director's report. <coughs> five. Okay. Uh, kind of pipeline project, uh, phase one, <coughs> still remaining to be completed. Uh, some minor punch list items and paving other state roadways. Uh, found out today that uh, that is scheduled to um, start next Monday, which is, uh, which is good. And just to, a note, kind of going through that contract, uh, all the costs associated with that, and it looks like that that contract's going to come in under about a million dollars less than what was the, uh, the bid price. Uh, so, uh, and much of that to do with we can have a great end your party then. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, much of it had to do with, uh, <clears throat> there was an estimate for a fair amount of contaminated soil that the contractor would potentially have to deal with. And, um, and although we had alleged, and the alleged number was higher than anticipated, um, they had no hazards or contaminated soils that needed to be disposed of, so that resulted in which meant to say it's on the overall cost of the contract. Um, phase two, uh, they had prepared an amendment for the additional work for the associated uh, route change and the bridge crossing. Um, that's um, being reviewed. We're close to finalizing that. We also provided a copy of that for to East Province to take a look at that. East Province is also looking at the 30% design plans uh, that Beta had, had completed to date. Steve, remind me, have they signed any binding commitment to pay their percentage? Not for construction. But they All have... All the engin engineering. They have for the engineering. Mm -hmm. And have they actually paid anything? Not yet. Have we submitted? Yes, I have. No. Mm -hmm. no not too, too long ago, Gina. And um, probably about, uh, I would say, maybe about a month. So, because I wanted it was how it, the agreement was set up was that uh, at certain milestones we would then submit our costs, and that was at 30% design, 60% design. So um, they received the 30% plans probably a couple months back, and then I submitted our costs about three days after that. So you know their MO in East Providence, having been there. Is this unusual? Should we be patient for another? I would be a little more. I'd be a little more patient. Okay. I, I think we should be patient. Because it's taken us a long time to just even get them to talk to us. Believe me, I know that. So we should just uh, yeah. give a chance to work. Yeah. Would you, was, uh, would you update us next month and let us know if you've gotten? Uh, no, I, absolutely. Um, it's uh, it was about three hundred thousand change request. I find in my world, if you expect prompt payment and follow up immediately when it was due and not paid, that you set a pattern of this is important. When do you expect comments back on the 30% or so? I would think sh shortly. It's been on for quite some time, over two months now. Um, demolition of, of the plant, we should be going out to bid for the first phase of that. Um, I was thinking
think by the coming, coming month. Um, and that involves all the, the, everything about the buildings, uh, the site, the work, uh, the tanks, the piping above ground, and all that. Um, we still continue to gain interest in the buildings. Um, provide another tour to our local historical architect. And we've also brought some representatives from a group called Preserve RI. Um, I think it's their local nonprofit that works on preservation of historical buildings. Um, I, I look at, I mean, these folks are kind of like the planners and the dreamers, and um, their next step is they want to bring in someone who has actual construction and renovation experience to see if it's doable. Um, you know, we're not still not knocking this building down like tomorrow. Like I said, we're doing it in phases. Uh, you know, my my take on it is, uh, from a business perspective, if someone wants to take the buildings, and so we don't have the cost of demolition, and it doesn't impact our operations. Is there a any harm in that, right? So. Um, they could put a, they well, could put a first you, floor to make a, a one thing you might consider that would. I used to be the chairman of Preserver Island, so if I can be helpful, okay. Later. But one thing you might consider is to retain the land under the building and get a land lease, which lessens the price they would have to pay for the building and it means you control it. Now, you have to give them a long term lease 50 to 100 years. Mm -hmm. But it means that you don't relinquish ultimate control of it, and you do get some revenue from it. Okay. So let me know. Don't have to to pay pay. I will um, maintain it. No, you know, no. I just want to. I'm just want to report to the board as to you know who I'm getting contacts from, and just yeah. kind of keep you abreast as to uh, what's happening with that. So have they expressed um, any thoughts about what it could be used for? No. 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 They, they could put a floor in so that it would be a, an entry level floor to sort of cover the basement, so to speak. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> don't I say, know. It depends what they want to do. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Well, the only reasonable thing for them to do with it would be to turn it into housing. It just wouldn't pay for itself or anything else. So, some kind of business office or something. Look around at how many empty business uh -huh. offices there are. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yep. That's where that is. Okay, for the uh, uh, dam removal, as you all know, um, we reached an important or critical milestone. We finally received a regulatory approval from CRMC for the lower dam. Um, they did, that was the meeting at September 27th. The approval did come with a couple of minor conditions. That is to monitor the private wells of the project abutters, which we were planning to do anyways. How long would we have to monitor those? Uh, we, we, uh, we said one year. Um, we haven't gotten back. They haven't gotten back to us on that yet. That sounds reasonable to me. And if you had yeah. to stretch to 18 months under extreme duress. Yeah, I, I, I thought maybe up to two years be the last one, but we went in and with one, and we'll see what they say. You'd want to see seasonal effects, so I would think if I was owners, I would say, well, we had a, a dry year or we had a wet, whatever. Yeah. And we, yeah. Is that our last board that we have to go? No. Um, <laughs> no. Um, we also received Army Corps, which followed suit shortly after the CRMC approval, which was uh, actually kind of a little surprising. Nice to have, um, and that was, in, and they had jurisdiction on the lower and the upper dam. Um, so we're still waiting on uh, DEM to act on the upper dam. Uh, DEM wetlands is the predominant review agency for the for the upper dam project, and um, I know Park Corp has been going back and forth with their staff, and they recently, um, I would say recently within a few last past few weeks. Submitted what I, we hope to be the last set of comments to some of their um, questions. Steve, um, going back to the other condition, the running of running a new water line. Yeah, is that um, 
any geographic extent that was limited to? Uh, no, it was very vague, and uh, it was actually somewhat of kind of a strange request that, that I don't know the CRMC really had even authority yeah. to it, ask for something like that, yeah. and and it's only for an estimated feasibility study. Yeah, there was a um, one person from Warren to speak against this. Right. And he made a very long, impassioned uh, speech about what was going on and what, what kind of harm we were ultimately, this project was ultimately bringing to the neighborhood along Serpentine Road. And I think that was the reaction that CRMC had to his comments. Uh, to well, yeah, I, I think I've said before, I think I'd like to see us do an evaluation of our entire service area to determine where we could extend service to cost effectively, of course, because it seems to me I always run into somebody who is surrounded by water pipes except for his end of the street or something like that. Um, we have a situation that's going on right now in, in Barrington. Uh, and and I, I got a call from the manager a couple of months ago and ultimately met with his family. Uh, and uh, their well is going problem. And it's an artesian well. They've spent a lot of money for filters, for this, for that, everything else. They're having problems. And they're not, they're not within 50 feet of a water line. So yeah. I'm, I'm making a plea for the council to study this as ways to help them. I mean, roughly, I mean, you're looking at about a mile to go all the, all the up Superintendent Road to Schoolhouse, so it could be 5,000 feet, 300 bucks, 300 dollars a foot. Yeah. About a million and a half, a million, about a million and a half, half really, about 10 homes. Time. Some creative financing. What? A million and a half, so 150,000 a home. Yeah. Right. All right. And DOT is moving away along with their project. Uh, their schedule is to have that road really open by the end of the year. Culprits are in. Culprits are a good size. All right, major change, major change outs. Um, past couple of months have been have been very good. Um, we're at 99 percent changed out. Um, I don't know too many what utilities really have even got 90 to 99 percent of their major change out program. So. Um, Who's the guy that's not changed now? Uh, Joe knows them all. Don't <laughs> follow. So am I reading this right that of 168 Badger ones, only 1% 1 have been changed? No, that, that's 1% 1 1 of the total amount of meters. Remaining. Oh, I see. Okay, percent of the total. Yes. So essentially 168 meters out of over the 17,000. Um, Providence water uh, sales were, were high again, um, kind of lingering effects of the drought. And uh, we've been starting to work together on the, um, putting together the capital and operations budgets and uh, we'll have a draft for the finance committee to take a look at next month. Um, conferences and training, just to let everybody know, I will be attending um, Executive Mansion Conference put on by Association of Metropolitan Water Agencies in Savannah, Georgia, um, this week. Good organization. What? It's a good organization. Yeah. Uh, All right, um, Mike, a little more to add on the operations. Any questions? So we're fortunate to receive uh, recently the new confined space entry equipment that we um, were able to procure under a grant that we were awarded by Beacon Mutual. Um, so we're happy to get that, and that's a, that's a nice improvement that will incorporate into a lot of our different uh, vaults and, and other confined space entry uh, related uh, appurtenances. Also, uh, 
we are expanding our gateways, our, our metered data collectors, um, in part because we're able to secure an agreement with the town of Warren where we're going to jump on a uh, fire antenna at the Twisted Fire Station. So um, that should pick up a lot of the uh, eastern Bristol Shore uh, that's been shielded because of the uh, the lay of the land over there. They're kind of down the hole from where Medicon is picking them up. So we're hopefully, we've done some testing there. Uh, we're hoping we get better reception once we're up on the antenna and, and we pick up a lot of the bits up, uh, hopefully extending uh, quite a ways down. So looking forward to get that uh, online and collecting data. Uh, and then, unfortunately, the pump station it is you know, coming along. Um, there's not too much, I mean, they can't really attack it with the way things are coming in, so it is trickling along. Um, fortunately, we did get the generator in, so they were able to close in the building, um, you know, especially as uh, we approach winter and the wet weather of the fall and winter. Um, but we were able to generate an updated schedule um, that the contractor is pretty firm on. Uh, which incorporates all the uh, delays and, and uh, expectations of uh, supply, and we included that. And unfortunately, it does push it out until next summer, uh, which we anticipated, uh, um, based on just communications. But that, at least this gives us something that is potentially a conservative estimate of almost the worst case scenario, unless something just never shows up. Um, so, fortunately, the generator did come in a little bit early. So, hopefully, things like this continue. Um, as the project evolves, but we won't know uh, until it actually happens. So, um, the other schedule we included phase two. Um, so, unfortunately, this is out there. Uh, one thing to note though, permitting, um, very long window in permitting. And that's unfortunately just based on our expanding to date. Um, the, you know, the authorities having jurisdiction over certain areas. Um, of the project as a whole haven't been as responsive as we'd like, um, which has led to a little bit of the delay. Um, so as you can see there, we have left a lot of time there. Um, and that could swing the design significantly if by chance we get more response, but based on experience, like I said, that's where we kind of see um, that aspect of the project going and how it impacts the project as a whole. With, with respect to the pumping station, I know some of you have got some questions. Um, with respect to uh, you know high service area work and when you know folks are wondering when they're going to get you know see increased pressure in their homes, um, we'll be putting together a communication um, an update on the project to the Bristol officials and to the local media uh, and of course all all of these walls. Um, I, I have a question. On the uh, stuff you got from the Beacon yes. that you're buying, I, I'd like to just suggest or recommend that you have a training session with your local departments. Uh, they'd be the first, if you have an issue with somebody in a hole, um, they'd be the first ones there because your guys are all over the place. But yeah. If they learn your equipment as well as their own, it would be beneficial to start a, a recovery or uh, uh, get somebody help. I, yeah, uh, that's I'm a sure, great idea. I'm sure each chief would be uh, happy to hear from you. To do that. <laughs> and fortunately, um, so this equipment is also used by Bristol Wastewater. Yeah. Um, so it may be a level of standardization involved. So that's that's a good. Um, yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Just they're the first ones there, so yeah, it'd be nice to have you know, be familiar with the gear. Sure. Jeanette will like show up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Just ready. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> about the information technology report. Okay, we'll move on. Financial report. Okay. We are up to September. Moving right along. Uh, I 
Steve said we're starting work on the budgets too, so we'll start working on those pretty much in earnest uh, tomorrow. Um, September, we look at September versus September. We have a couple of uh, pretty obvious timing things uh, versus last September. Uh, first up, revenue is up 38% versus last September. Um, that's even up a little bit from August, as Steve said, July was dry, August was dry. We're still billing those months out. Um, I think uh, September was another top five or close to top five consumption month too, so that's helping. Uh, expenses are only a little slightly higher. They're actually down a little bit from August than last uh, September. Um, this is like I said, where some, some timing things have been. Administrative expenses is a lot higher, and that's uh, because you know, Dan Shop's not here right now. Uh, but last September, we were able to not make the pension contribution because we were overfunded. And this year, obviously, we're still making the pension contribution. So that's the timing thing right there. We had a contribution this year. We didn't have one last year. Uh, professional fees uh, are down a little bit. Uh, less legal billing. I don't know what's up with that. Um, and consultants are a little bit lower. I think some of the, I think some of the, the projects being slower, some of the consulting costs are a little bit delayed as well. Um, computer expenses down. Again, another timing thing. Last year, we bought a server. So I was in there last September, no such server this year. Uh, and operational expenses are higher, and it's just some timing with some uh, new services and paving. Uh, so when we look at July, uh, July, September cumulative, so March through September, things even out a little bit. Um, so we have revenue up almost 8% versus last September, and high months of uh, consumption in July, August, and even into September. Um, expenses are a little bit higher, 4.4% higher than last year. A lot of this is just due to some timing things. Again, the professional fees are a little under so far. Um, again, they go into consultants with the projects being delayed. Um, depreciation and amortization is a little higher. That's largely due to, we, we must have some decent sized things capitalized last year and the year before they're starting to really spin that number a little bit higher than it was in the prior year. And we also had the uh, debt service costs in this year. We didn't have that last year. And as one would expect, the purchases of water are a lot higher than they were last year due to the dry um, summer, which is good business. When we get to actual versus budget, we are over 10% over budget in revenue, which is a good thing. You want to be over budget in revenue. Um, again, dry summer and a lot of consumption. Um, we should see this kind of trickle through maybe a little bit into October. Um, we should even off now. It's time to get to the lower consumption months. Um, expenses are five point, you know, almost two thirds percent under budget. Most of the items are under budget. Uh, the biggest one under budget again, the professional fees, um, and it's a lot of just timing. Again, up to the projects being delayed is probably hurting a lot of these consulting fees. Um, a, and then there's a couple of items that were kind of over budget. These are the same ones that we've been seeing. Depreciation, like I just mentioned, and amortization's over. Office expenses is over just a little bit, and that's due to the timing with the copier and maintenance agreements. Um, and utilities expenses is over just a little bit too. Not that much actually. Thirty-six hundred, and that's just a little bit of timing. And I think we had some bills that <clears throat> came in late at the end of last year and the beginning of this year, and just the increased costs as we're all seeing with our uh, own utility bills. Um, pages seven and nine are the consumption and uh, gallons, dollars billed and gallons delivered. Uh, the dollars bill is up 10.74%, which is 6.256% last month. Um, and the gallons delivered is up 2.46%. Again, high consumption was a good, good summer. Um, in terms of uh, weather, for outdoor activities, which was in, for our business, but probably bad for uh, landscaping. Uh, the trust report, we're still at around 6.34% for the debt service. We're still looking pretty good there. And the pension report, September's balance was, uh, again, it's decreasing. September wasn't a great month in the market. The balance was uh, just over 3.1 million. It's down about 154,000 from June, which is the end of the plan year. Um, so that is that. And like uh, so I said, we're working on, start working on the budget to get that put together. 
Any questions? Yeah, could you explain why September is so low compared to August and October? Which cumulative or individual? Month? Individual, every year. If you look at the charts on both dollars bill and- Oh, you're talking about Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. a big dip there, and I really hadn't noticed that before. I mean, it's been there, but I hadn't had it then. Maybe Joe on that. That has to do with the oh. section of the system that we're billing. In the summer months when we typically bill uh, uh, Barrington, we tend to see a lot of consumption, excess consumption. And we don't see that when we bill Warren. And I suspect it's a timing of which section of the system we're billing. And that's why you, you see that, uh, uh, that, that variation. Okay, so then the month to the month, you can compare to year to year, but not to the prior month because that's that, correct. That's correct. Yeah, we went out in September. When I went out in September, when he gave the report, I'm like, oh my gosh, it dropped a lot. Then I looked, whoa, compared to last September, that's pretty yeah. good. Eh? Yeah, but, so yeah, month to month, it kind of looks weird, but if you look across the years in that same month, it kind of makes a little more sense. And you could probably go back and, I mean, I haven't been here very long. Oh yeah, 2019 was a really wet summer, so that makes sense. So yeah, straight across makes sense, month to month. Sometimes doesn't. And, and the other issue too is that uh, we do build uh, 90 days in arrears. And you never really get the full <coughs> impact of that until you're well into those 90 days. And sometimes it might take two or three months before you see the full impact of the, the, the that the weather has had on your buildings. Okay. Any other questions? Very good. Thank you, Dan. Next item, any uh, board member town council reports as such? I've been getting a request that I just forward in from the council. Oh. Okay. Relative to, it's an election year as we all know, but uh, when's the water pressure going to get better in this area? People are waiting for the pump. So gotcha. They are, they are aware of where we are today. They being the council and what was in the back. All right. I, I'm, I'm presuming you're getting answers to your comments. Yeah, I just, these guys are terrific. I, I, okay. I blast something out and it comes back and I go ahead and respond to my liaison to the council or Aaron Lay. So that's what I've been talking with. Right. Next item, Steve, you want to take care of this or give the explanation, please? This is the approval of firms for three year on call engineering service uh, yeah. by category. Yes, so we put on our RFP. Um, for kind of three-year on-call engineering services based on a number of seven different categories where we may uh, request engineering services on. Um, and we received requests from four firms. Um, not all of them um, responded to each category. So, um, so we put in the company under each of the business categories that we were looking to, to approve. Move to approve as recommended. Uh, I, I have a question. Steve, with a category where there's only one or two companies listed, yep. that sounds like we'll lock in with them. And if they end up falling off the end of the world, where, what do we do about that? Or if someone brand new shows up, we're talking about a three-year term. You're right. Well, I mean, depending on the project, we could always just issue an, R an RFP uh, out um, for, for a specific project if we, if we felt that we didn't have uh, any sufficient response from the companies that we have already here on the list. Okay, so we can go outside of this list. Yes. Okay. So we have uh, four motions put on. It's now seconded. Any other comments or questions? But now there's no money involved in this. This is choice, no. choice. So. No, and then we, you know, if we have, if, if a project does um, yeah, you get, you get. come up, um, we would then ask for a task order and pricing, and then you know, depending on the cost, we would come back right to the board for approval. But by by that, I meant to, I meant to say we're voting on choices, correct, which will then deal with money and efficiency and so on. Right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any negatives? It is approved unanimously. Thank you. Second item here, three-year on-call survey. Same thing for surveying companies. Will it be approved? Second. Any questions or comments? 
All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. It is unanimous. Approval for contract amendment to beta for engineering services associated with contract closeout of phase one, Pawtucket Pipeline Project. Yeah, I move to approve that. Second. Questions, comments? I thought it was a nice explanation. This is uh, to beta for $35,018. Always surprises me. I mean, wipe out. I mean, how come they don't have the pennies that, that go with this? <laughs> they round it off. Be that as it may. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. I see why you didn't vote. Did you vote? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. It's your next. Okay. Okay, discussion on laptops. Oh, this is scary. I am <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reason that this has happened. Uh, you believe it. <laughs> the uh, Barrington Town Council has been using laptops for some time. Either their own computers or they give them a Chromebook. You know, nothing fancy. And this essentially says that the, uh, the information for the meetings is sent out email. You get it in your computer right away. And so it cuts down all the paper transfer, all the delivery, all the copying, all the other stuff. Um, they have all the information. And uh, if, it, if it's coming in last minute, it can still be transmitted to them very easily. Alan, are you saying they literally work on the electronic only without paper backup? Yeah, yeah. That's and now I talked to the town clerk. They use a clerk. Clerk works. Is that it? Uh, clerk base. Clerk base. And and uh, if you want to see something else, you can go on. You go on the clerk base. And you get anything you want. All the background, all the stuff. It's it's another way of dealing with it. Uh, it, it makes the job. Easier for Lauren, that's for sure. You mean for the board? For the whole board, but I mean, I, her. I'm surprised we didn't start doing that three or four years ago. Well, I talked about this before, and I figured, okay. And so I went and talked to, I talked to the town clerk, Mary and Sisto, and, and, and talked to Lauren and said, oh, check this out. Uh, you can actually buy the Chromebook for somewhere around $230 or something like that if, if we decided to. Just give everybody a Chromebook, or have them use it, uh, and it's a it's a it's not a complicated. Uh, How much is the program? I don't think there's any cost for that that I'm aware of. But that, I think with the hardware and the software, I think it's about five hundred bucks total. But if you don't need the hardware, I mean, well, the, what the Chromebook, yeah, you, know, you can stuff. access it with any computer, right? You yeah. can. Oh, yeah. And if you have a, your own laptop, you can use that. But a, a Chromebook, I went online. A Chromebook is Anywhere from two hundred and thirty to two hundred and fifty dollars for the Chromebook. I will Chromebook. pay you not to give me a Chromebook. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yes. you. Oh, or maybe others. Uh, that's. I think that's what they're. Some of the stuff that they're using. The question that was raised, I asked, what do you do about about uh, um, executive session stuff? And uh, Mary sends it. Now that would be a question of Joe deciding what we do. If, if it was the executive session. And uh, you could decide whether you send that or not, um, or it would ha hand it out at the meetings like we do right now. But that's the only change that I see. But you would have access anything that she has in the computer. You have access to. I think it would be far better than right now. You you could have access now. Yeah, you could have. Access. I mean, right right now, Lauren sends to Joe the link. Yeah, I, to I the doc, to the agenda and the documents. Yeah. And um, Lauren actually went and, and, and pulled all three communities. Um, it, you know, Barrington doesn't issue all the paper, um, but they didn't supply lap laptops or tablets. The, the council members just use their own devices. Um, yeah, you get it by, I get it by email. I just get an email with a link and it's right there. What, what is even easier, in my opinion, is something like Dropbox, where you could decide the hierarchy of the files and you could send a notice that something has been added to the 
central files. It's like Microsoft's iDrive or whatever it's called. Right. Um, but it's much easier to use and it's very accessible on your phone. Anyway, I think yeah, great. And, uh, whatever, I know, whatever you in, decide doing. In Bristol, they said they would. They they do the same. They prefer the e-docs. They use their own devices in Bristol. Yeah, and they and they had the bud. Their budgeting. So they um, may. They may buy some devices, but not specifically just for the members themselves. Mm -hmm. you said? Yeah, just for general use. Yes. You, you would still have to make a paper copy for public review if so somebody came in and said, I'd like to see the agenda, or I'd like to see item number four, or whatever. Right? That last happened, I think, in 1998. <laughs> Nobody asked me that. Yeah. No, no, but you would have for public, for public action. Well, she could print that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The actual the agenda is available online. Yeah. No, but the actual it's documents that are going to be discussed, I think, would have to be available. They're somebody... available online, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That would be okay. I suppose if you had an extra laptop for the public to use. No. 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 That way they could, if they were here, they could. And they could print it if they wanted. Well, yeah. You're assuming they have the ability to use the laptop. And... Well, but certainly one of our people could call up what you're at and they could look at it if that's their issue. We don't have anybody here who ever asks for agenda no. items. No, no. I don't think that's up to the point of a, a requirement. <coughs> Nobody's ever come and asked for it. I, I, my question is, there's no state law require you to have a paper copy of something no. on public review. No, the only thing that they that you need a paper copy of is the agenda to post at town hall. Right. Right. Okay. And that's done anyway. We don't print out an extra package for the public. Right. No, well, but if somebody came in here. If someone came in here and said, I want to see uh, I report, well, yeah. we can go right there. Right. I actually bring copies, yeah. a couple copies with me just in case. Yeah. 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 Anyway, the, the whole purpose, I said, can we put on the agenda, see if the board is interested in this, you know, whatever it takes to do, staff and work out and figure it out, you know, how you move forward with it. So, now, should, should we have actual water authority emails? Because, like, I use my private email. That's not that school email. But if something were to go awry and somebody wanted to get hold of our documents, then in the court situation, they would be subpoenaing my school and private email account. Well, I think we should have water board emails. We're, I mean, we're forced to have W-2s, which is stupid. Mm -hmm. we, we should have 1099s. So right. if we're W-2 employees, we should have water board emails. I agree. Well, the council has a council email. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, I, this is beyond me. I guess okay, someone will, will look figure this that. out. Yeah. But if you, How much are you going to say about clips? <laughs> so nobody's objecting, we should move forward to figure this I, out. I was always a proponent for doing double-sided copies, so <laughs> we, and nobody would ever want, nobody would ever agree with me on that Why? for whatever reason. Why? But this way, we're going to get rid of the paper entirely. Do a double-sided email. Why? Look Why? at the back of your. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we're going to move forward with this. Nobody's objecting. And, 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 uh, in what form or fashion? Well, figure figure out the way to go. Are we clerk base? Does, it, does everybody? Do you want to show your hands as to how we feel about it? Does anyone just want to use their own devices? Do you want the authority to buy everybody a Chromebook? Uh, I'll use my own. I don't have. I don't have. I don't have why, do we, why don't we start? Do some people still want paper copies? How about if you send an email out to each person so they can keep their preferences private and say, we're going to make this change as of January. Do you want a device or not? And here's how we're going to do it. I, I, for the next, I would just do it the way you do it with me to start, Lauren. Mm -hmm. Send them a link. They can download it or they can print it. They can do whatever they want with it. But that saves you from having to. We can we can send out a, a request and, then, and I mean each board member can respond just back to Lauren individually. Right, but I'm saying the way to transmit it could just be that email with the link. Yeah. Right, when you, you send the agenda. Yes, but the advantage of setting right. the advantage of setting up Dropbox would be that a person could then go and see what was on the agenda in June, what were the 
materials. I keep mine for a year. So maybe I'm OCD, but I think there's an advantage to making them accessible. So you see, she see the past ones as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, basically. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. And then you give them access to just the board members. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we'll kind of move forward. And that way, if you have a new member of the board, they can go back and look at this. Right. All right, that's well, good. There also an action relative to Chris's comment on individual yes. email. Yes, yeah. In fact, well, we we were talking about that internally too. That if we were going to provide um, a device, you you were going to need a, um, a company email, anyways. So maybe we should give it away a company email. Yeah, that you're request. right. And, well, that, that's what the town council does in Barrington. I guess they do the same thing. Then you should, have, well, if you do that, you should list our emails on the website. So yeah. In Barrington, the council members have a Barrington yeah. Town Council email. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let's see. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I guess the next, the next thing is uh, employee handbook update. Everything's been taken care of, all the bits and pieces, the final touches. No. No. So Joe, this is the meeting that Joe was not at. <laughs> See? The, the, the quick meeting that Joe was not at. <laughs> On their boat? No. No. <laughs> Maybe we should send him a pickup copy to do that. <laughs> so I provided you the, the only, I guess, the last remaining item that's in, in question. Um, I, I think we're good with page eight. Um, however, the last statement on page 38 was not, was not specifically approved by the board. I know it was discussed at the policy committee meeting. Um, but then that also begs the question, I mean, but I, I think there are provisions in the handbook that may apply to the board. So, yeah. you know, whether this statement should even be, be in there yes. at, at all. There's also a section in our bylaws, I think, bylaws, that it's functions of directors. Yeah. Yes, there is a there is a, a document Six. called the Code of Conduct. Yeah. yeah. The Code of Conduct, which is somewhat needs probably could use updated itself too, but um, and just so I know, what was the discussion around putting that line in into the well it, initially uh, it came up in terms of putting it in the outside employment because it didn't seem relevant to us. Yeah. And Steve said there is a guide for directors, and therefore why should any of this policy apply to the directors? But if the director's guide, or whatever it's called, is not that inclusive, then we may need some of this in here. But then is it, at the moment it's redundant. We have the same provision in on page eight and on page uh, 38. Yeah. And where it belongs depends on what we're trying to accomplish. And I'm a little confused now as to how inclusive is this director's manual, whatever the thing is called. If we're not, I'm not, I've never seen it. If that covers the entire thing for directors, then I would want the sentence added at the very end on page 38. This doesn't apply. But if that isn't all inclusive, then we only want to exclude whatever should be excluded, which is the outside employment part. Do, do, you, do you want to look at do you want to look at that provision of the of the director's code of conduct? Before? Because what I what I would might what I might suggest is if you put that sentence at the end, Tom, that you would, instead of just saying simply this doesn't apply, because someone might read that wrong, mm -hmm. it might be comma or period. Directors are subject to the code of conduct. Okay, no problem. With that. Yeah. So do you want to so do you want to see the code of conduct? Yeah, that, should be, that, that, yeah, that yeah. should be brought today. Mm, yeah, I'm not sure I'm the one who should be doing the initial review on this sort of thing. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, do you want us to circulate as we all see well? Up. They yeah. should be viewed together. Yeah, but, but for the purpose of approving the, 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 the employee handbook, can we just say that board of directors are governed by the, the, the code of conduct for now? 
Yeah, buddy, you want to do that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Does that does that work so that we so that so that we take that sentence and leave it at the end and so we leave it on page eight then? Yeah, we can leave it both places. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. that's a little dumb. I would. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then and then put um, we'll put that the, it's uh, it doesn't apply to directors. Directors are governed by the code of conduct. And then we'll send you the code of conduct, and we maybe we'll if that needs to be updated, we'll update that as well. Yes. Does that work? So we can vote tonight with these two exclusions to go ahead and approve the basic first yeah. with, with the change that um, Judge right. added to the language that already has been there. Okay. So what are we saying on page 38? So page 38, you would say, provisions of this employee handbook shall not apply to members of the BCWA Board of Directors. Period. Uh, the BCWA Board of Directors are governed by uh, the BCWA Code of Conduct applicable to directors or to board members. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah. But it begs the question: is that, does, is that is that even then even needed? If you're saying it doesn't apply, it just doesn't apply. To well, because I think what I now I'm hearing that Tom said Tom's right. Tom's. Uh, they don't want that sent, they want uh, that page eight uh, to make it clear that it doesn't apply to board members to the outside employment. Right, that was clear. So that was, that they definitely want. Yeah. And then at the end, I think what I'm hearing is that they want that this doesn't apply to the board of directors because there are provisions that wouldn't apply to the board of directors. We didn't do a fine tooth comb review of the entire policy in terms of what else might apply to a director. Because I wasn't thinking of them being in place. And Alan brought that up yeah. uh, and we had our meeting. Yeah, well, we are employees. Right. right. And so what else is there hidden in there? That's that's catch it. The catch all is at 38 yeah. to deal with that. So the 38 would catch it, then you would say they're subject to the code of conduct. And then if you've got to make changes to the code of conduct, you make changes to the code of conduct. No, that simplifies. At least we can take care. That's at least that's what I'm sort of hearing. The rest of the employees. That you don't want the entire employee handbook applicable to directors. Enabling legislation. That's my recommendation. Okay. You know, technically, I tried to fight this battle two years ago when we were told we were going to get a W-2 instead of a 1099. Yeah. Remember, we told the government it, to stick it. It is, in my opinion, <laughs> outrageous. And it blurs the line between an employee and a director. Yeah. It's only because they want their money. Mm -hmm. They I'm, want their little piece of money. No, it, no that no, was a great requirement by it. our auditors. And I think they are incorrect. Yeah, but Have you but run into this with other boards? Council told us we had to do it. That they're, that they're issued a... W-2 instead of 1099. I don't think I've ever heard of W-2 being issued. Well, we get a W-2. Oh, I, I know. I was here for that. Yeah, yeah you that told us a, we had to do it. No, I did not tell you. No, the you auditors. Know. I said the auditors said they had to do it. And if the auditors say you had to do it, then you've got to decide whether or not. I think we should take an objection to the auditor's opinion and change this as of January so we get 1099s. And we then no longer blur the line between the employee and a board of directors member. The government's going to get their money. If you get a 1099, you're going to have to pay it versus that's taken out now, a little bit now. So it really doesn't matter. And to your doesn't point, matter it does government. kind of blur the line. I understand that. Employee. But I had another explanation that said, since we're paid quarterly, I guess it is, they get their little slice quarterly. Right? You'd have to put that back on the agenda and revisit the whole the thing because I, I would like to revisit. Yes, yeah, so I mean, that's a decision. We just want to be careful that we don't end up causing a major problem for the authority because of this stance. I, right, that's why I would say you'd have to put it on the agenda to revisit revisit that, and maybe it's worthwhile. To Is do the that. Providence Water? Do they get paid for serving on the Providence Water Board? My suggestion would be to check with them and Newport, yeah. Kent County, and if they're all 1099s, let's put it on the agenda. If they're not, I'll keep my mouth shut. Okay, can we do that? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So meanwhile, we got this.
We need a motion to accept the personnel manual as modified. Second. 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 All in favor, please say aye. 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 It is unanimous. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so you're, you're just removing and adding people to sign papers. Yes, uh, uh, to approve the motion. Okay, we so need moved. It's moved. Second. Seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Again, unanimous. Thank you. And Mark is off. Executive session. Executive. Now we haven't heard anything from uh, from Dan Jock. I would assume he's not coming. And I did confirm with him before I went away last week that he was coming, and I gave him the date and time. Okay. And I've not heard since. So. Okay. So we're holding on to that for like next month. I'll reach out to him tomorrow and see what happened. Maybe. Well, I think. Let me ask a question. Do we feel the need to have somebody in person to walk us through this written report? I had a correction. Oh, one second. I think we I'm do. I'm totally confused over, but that's my confusion about it. Yeah, I think it's quite worthwhile having him here. However, the discussion I think was going to take place about the next meetings was to have a, a meeting of the Finance Committee in November and, and then have our last meeting uh, September 7th, or December 7th. Right. But could we have, along with a, a, a I, I suspect many of us will attend the Finance Committee meeting anyway, just to see what's going on. Could we have that as a meeting and pick up on, on If the, we did it as a Finance Committee meeting, he could, then, he, could, he could attend by Zoom, right? Legally? We're all here in person. He could attend by Zoom uh, at a board meeting, too. Why would he? I don't think we necessarily would need him here in person. We just want to be able to ask him yeah, questions. Sure. I, I don't really. uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure about that because how would uh, we're on Zoom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be because yeah, because it, you're, you're having an open public meeting, so you'd be coming here. We're all here. Yeah. We're on and, Zoom, and, and he's on Zoom. And we can see it. We have that. We see his face here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's do that. That's less inconvenient to him. Do you do? You, um, all right, can we, can we just talk about this agenda item now then? Yeah, let's, let's uh, talk about this. Is, this is uh, number 15. Okay, so um, I was just going to throw it out to the board. Um, this is the format we used last year only because, uh, you know, we're kind of late in, in the month of October. Move to approve. Okay, well, well <laughs> yeah, but now, but now with Dan, not, Dan Jock not showing up, are we going to have, uh, um, is he going to just report to the Finance Committee? Or are we going to have a Finance Committee meeting and then a, a, just a stroke board meeting afterwards where he gives his presentation? We can do that. I'm fine with him just coming to the Finance Committee meeting, but I'm on the Finance Committee, so I think other people should speak up. What do you want to do? I, mean, I don't want to hear the presentation to us. The Finance Committee is going to grill them anyway to find out what they want to know. Okay. The answers report to us. And, and the rest of us can attend the Finance Committee meeting if we want to. Yeah, you right. can express your opinion. It's becoming a de facto board meeting just under a different color. All right, that's okay. So let's set it up that way. But he's, you know, it's a, it's a financial issue, so he, he fits the, Fair the enough. you know, reporting to the Finance Committee. Fair so enough. And then if we have any real problems or issues, we can put it on the agenda for January and talk to them. Well, it would be at the December meeting. And then, oh, and then the December it. meeting uh, would be scheduled because we're not going to have a full board meeting in November. We move the December meeting up one week to December 7th. Okay. Does that make sense? And then before the, the holidays, and no, that's then, what we're uh, going to do. That's what we'll do. So let's let's go into executive session. There's nothing else we're going to do when we come out of executive session. No, no. So it's uh, at quarter at five minutes to six. We're going into executive session to discuss litigation on North Farm pursuant to Rhode Island General Law 4246.5a2, and to deal with executive session minutes. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, we're doing it.
603, we concluded our executive session. Then in motion to return to open session. No more. Second. All those in favor, raise your hand. It is unanimous. Motion to seal the minutes so of the executive session. Second. All those in favor, raise your hand. And a motion to dissolve our meeting. Oh, and we've already agreed we're going to meet uh, on uh, what, kind, what date next month, the Finance Committee? November 14th. 16th. Yeah, November 16th, 16th is the Finance Committee, and December 7th is the Board Meeting. We are last meeting of December. So no Board Meeting in December in November. Correct. Correct. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. We'll give you, we'll give you a month off, uh, Mr. Keogh.